Good. David, wake up. Wake uh, up, David. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, good, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Hoops HD Championship Week Video Notebook, day number 380, day number 12. Um, up to a dozen. I've been I'm locked in here Chad. for 12 days, Chad. Chad Sherwood, David Griggs over there locked, locked in the puppet bunker, John Sleeka with us, and joining Thank us for you. the first time in our video notebooks, uh, welcome back in, Brian Black. Brian, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. I'm locked here. in a bunker, Brian. <laughs> I'm not doing so well. <laughs> uh, we are here tonight to go over all of the conference tournament action that we have to saw today. A huge, very, very busy day. Preview tomorrow's games, and uh, we've got a few special treats planned, uh, including David. Breaking news: We have free chili. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> we're going to be giving away free chili to to. The tenth viewer to call in tonight. All right, so we'll be keeping our ears open for the phone. Tenth viewer to call in. Congratulations, free chili. Um, yeah. but, uh, on that note, let's go ahead and pull up the screen here of all the games that happened today, and we're going to start things off in the whack. Uh, Brian representing the Lopes, I believe, right? That's right. Big, uh, uh, big. Is it the first appearance for them in the in the whack title game? Uh, first appearance in the WAC, in the WAC tournament period. Uh, yeah. This is their first year off of the transition, isn't it? It is their first year, yeah. and they, right. after squeezing by UMKC in the first round, nice win today over Utah Valley, though. Yeah, uh, you know, yesterday it looked like they were going to go out. Uh, really looking good today. Um, and uh, let's see, Florida Gulf Coast did it the second year. I want to say uh, North and Dakota they, State they, did they, it in their and, first. NKU did it last year in their very first year eligible. Yeah, and North Dakota State did it in their first year. Uh, not, Tim Miles was not the coach that particular year, but he's the one that uh, built it into – that made it all possible. And I want to say there was another team, but it is very rare that a team makes the NCAA tournament for the first time that they're eligible for it. But we might be able to see it for the second time in about 12 months. Yeah, and John, in the second game tonight on uh, New Mexico State, had a tough battle from Seattle, but they did survive. And that was a game where the Red Hawks actually led by six points at the half before uh, New Mexico State was able to mount a comeback. And as we'll get into a little bit later in the show, we could be seeing both teams in the land of enchantment making the field of 68 this year. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and, uh, Brian, what do you think about tomorrow's game, New Mexico State against Grand Canyon? Who do you think wins it? It's going to be close. I mean, there's a lot, uh, a lot of things that uh, the GCU fans uh, can be excited about. You know, they have a good coach, uh, Dan Marley, who has built uh, built a pretty solid program so far. So I would say, I would just looking at the teams, kind of how their seasons have gone and where they're at. It'll be a fairly intense back and forth game, but I think uh, New Mexico State will in the end, win, win a close game. Yeah, New Mexico State fans say that it's not a rivalry, and they'll cite reasons for that, uh, particularly how dominant New Mexico State's been in the series and all the history they have in the WAC. Maybe it's a rivalry, maybe it isn't, but it is definitely a feud, and that was exhibited tonight. At least I didn't – I mean, I was watching the Lopes game, but I had about seven or eight other screens going, but – Lopes fans jammed in the arena rooting for Seattle all night tonight. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the atmosphere going to be tomorrow with uh, with the New Mexico State and Lopes fans in there? It's, I, I'm already excited for it. <laughs> uh, it was semifinal day today as well in the ACC where we saw Virginia – maybe not even that close against Clemson and a, and a game between North Carolina and Duke that Carolina we thought was going to run away with it. And Duke made a late charge and even had a shot by Grayson Allen, a really bad three pointer, an awful shot. I thought by Allen at the, at the very end to try to tie it. Well, it wasn't that bad. Had the, had the rim been a few more feet to the left, it would have gone in. <laughs> yeah. Had, had he decided that he had four seconds left, he could actually pass the ball. and didn't have to shoot the three at the buzzer and, and maybe, you know, Pretend he had other teammates on there that are, you know, all American caliber type of players too, but yeah, like he's the only guy on the team. Right. Uh, John, we got Virginia and Carolina tomorrow. Uh, what do you think about this game? First of all, 
Well, I think the style of play is probably going to be more conducive to uh, Virginia because they seem to be pretty consistent against that Carolina, both home and away. But it's probably going to be a 50-50 crowd. So I would give Virginia the edge. But no matter what happens, they should have already locked up the number one overall seed for the NCAA tournament. Well, Brian, I think the other question, though, is there is a fourth one seed that's, that is maybe up for grabs, especially when we, we'll see what happens in the Big East tonight. But uh, if Carolina beats Virginia tomorrow, do you think they have a shot at that one seed? I do think they have a shot, uh, an outside shot. I wouldn't say it's like a slam dunk, but, uh, I mean, that, would, that win over Virginia would be certainly pretty attractive to the committee's eyes. Uh, but you know, the question is, are they going to bump Kansas down? Uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of hard to say, but I certainly think there is a chance that we get two ACC teams in that, uh, in that group of four one seeds. Yeah. I don't think our committee will give it to them, but as far as what the real one would do, uh, there, er- there are some warts on their profile that you typically don't see. Yeah. On a one seed profile, uh, you, you know, the sixth place finish, although, I'll I'll comment on that in a second. It really wasn't a sixth-place finish. They ended up there via tiebreakers. They're really tied for third. That's one. The nine losses, the home loss to Walford. But if they were to win tomorrow, they would be 15-7 and in the ACC. They will have had wins away from home against Duke, who's a protected seed, um, Virginia, who's a one seed, uh, you, you know, Miami, who's probably in the top half of the bracket. That's just in this tournament. That's yeah. on top of everything else they'd already done, a win at Tennessee, most likely a protected seed. So while there's some stuff on there that you typically don't see on a one profile, there's also a lot of stuff on there that you do, and they have more of it than Xavier, for instance, who's yeah. a team that we have on the one line. And, and that's it. You know, Xavier would be a second one seed out of the Big East as I pull the Big East standings up. And, John, Musketeers lost today. It was a, a rare close game they lost, but by the same token, we did not think this one was going to be a close one given that uh, the Musketeers had pulled up by as many as uh, 16 points in the second half before shots stopped falling and Providence made a furious rally. They were able to extend the game to overtime, but at that point the Friars clearly had the momentum and suddenly Providence is a team that's gone from bubble to much more safely in our field, at least. Yeah, and, and now we've got this Villanova-Providence final coming up here, David. And, and first of all, this is where I think that the, even more so than Kansas if they lose tomorrow, I think this, is, this Xavier losing in the semifinals, probably going to have Villanova in there. The committee may be wanting to go with a, four different conferences. That's where I think Carolina could steal that fourth one seed. Although well, they'd be the second ACC team, so not really four different conferences, but. Right. I, I mean, I don't think they think of it that way. I mean, we just did the mock committee. You just discuss and you vote. I, I don't think there's a conscious effort to spread it out amongst conferences. I, I don't think. I, I've never been under that impression. Uh, it, I, Xavier has a case for it, certainly. I mean, we've been putting them on the one line in our, you know, weekly bracket uh, rundown shows for, you know, the last month or so. So, but when you look at them, when you look at them and you line them up against Kansas and even in North Carolina, uh, they have more in, in terms of high quality wins away from home than what Xavier has. So while Xavier has a really good team and they could certainly end up with a one seed, uh, there's a case to give it to Kansas or North Carolina instead, or both of them instead. I don't think it's a matter of necessarily winning games away from home, but Overall, the quality of wins is higher for yeah. Carolina compared to a team like Xavier, where they beat predominantly teams that are going to be seated, I would say, 7-10. to 10. Yeah. And oh. what's crazy about Kansas, again, uh, they what you typically don't see out of a one seed is home losses of any kind. They have four. But what's crazy about them is just how many wins away from home they've had. So kind of a well, bit of an anomaly there. Brian, what about this championship game tomorrow, Providence-Villanova? Do you think Providence has a shot to pull off another upset? Oh, sure. No, they have a shot. It's not going to be easy, but uh, and Villanova's hitting their stride. Uh, obviously, uh, this time of year, they play better and better. Um, you know, obviously, two years ago, they went all the way. So, 
you know, Jay Wright, very experienced coach, and Ed Cooley uh, continues to get more and more experience. But uh, when you look at it, I do think that it'll be close, but I do think that, that Villanova just has a little bit too much firepower. And, again, as far as coaching goes, just a little bit too much experience there as opposed – to, uh, to Ed Cooley, who has done a tremendous job this year with the Providence, do I say? But I think it'll be a close three for Villanova. Yeah. Um, Big 12 tournament tomorrow. Big 12 tournament, we've got, well, today we had Kansas taking care of Kansas State and a real fun one between West Virginia and Texas Tech, David, that West Virginia just barely pulled out there. Yeah, that one seesawed back and forth. Uh, I That's a good win over a good Texas Tech team that I know they've been slumping, and I think that West Virginia may not get as much credit for this win as because of that, but they probably should because, yeah, while Texas Tech was slumping, they were slumping without their full slate of players. They had them back tonight. West Virginia still beat them, so that was no small thing. Um, West Virginia looking pretty good in this tournament, picking up – a night, a, well, particularly tonight, a real nice win against what I still think is a protected seed caliber team in right. Texas Tech. John, how about tomorrow? Can West Virginia beat Kansas? Oh, absolutely. Uh, West Virginia can beat Kansas. I mean, it is going to be in a, a quasi-home environment as far as the, the Jayhawks go. I don't think they can beat Kansas. <laughs> Brian, what do you think? <laughs> Again, I think it'll be close, but uh, it's just this time of year, Kansas, they just – it was it last year was an aberration. They lost to TCU, was it? I, I just think – I think you're going to see Kansas uh, – Kansas, what are they? You said it's kind of a home advantage for them. Are they still in Kansas City, right? Yeah, it's in Kansas City. Yeah. They're just going to have too many fans there. They're going to have way too much behind them. Mm-hmm. Um, John, let me head over to you for the SEC where it was actually quarterfinal day. This championship's not till Sunday – but we saw um, a game, in the first game of the day by Colin Sexton that uh, there's all this talk about put Oklahoma in the field so you can watch Trey Young play. You want to put a player in that I want to see play. I want to see Colin Sexton play again. Uh, he was unbelievable. Auburn was up big in the first half, and I don't think they even scored yet in the second half. They're still in the locker room right now. <laughs> Auburn was up by, I think it was 10 going into halftime, but Alabama ended up outscoring the Tigers by about 30 points in the second half. I think it was somewhere around 50 to 22. Auburn did not score a field goal for the first 10 minutes of the second half, and that's when Alabama really kicked into another gear. It's been fun to watch these two uh, this year because, uh, I mean, you know, it's a it's an enormous football rivalry. The yeah. basketball typically isn't as good. I mean, they've had good teams in the past, both of them, but it's rare that they've been good at the same time like they are this year. And it's kind of crazy how one's fed, how one is kind of fed off the other. Auburn running away from it, a lot of energy and excitement around that team, and now Alabama with their run through this tournament is kind of experiencing the same thing. So they do like the basketball there when it's good, like it is this year and just a lot of energy and uh, a lot of intensity around the game today. In fact, Bruce Pearl after the game had a, had, you know, I guess was saying hello to the strength coach at Alabama. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other three games today, Kentucky took care of Georgia. Tennessee got a, Battle for Mississippi State, but hung on. And Arkansas, Brian, with a nice win over Florida. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, how, you know, Florida responds, obviously assuming they're going to be, uh, you know, a, a decent, somewhat decent seed in the tournament. Um, but, yeah, I mean, a good win for Arkansas, both these teams solidly in the field. So uh, it's going to be interesting, obviously, to see if uh, Arkansas – if they can get it done tomorrow versus uh, versus Tennessee, um, just to see how they, uh, you know, if, if they're able to, to move all the way through this, uh, through this tournament, uh, you know, like you said, a lot of excitement around uh, really all four of these teams. It's good to see, uh, it's good to see what, um, what Tennessee has been able to do as well. So I look for a real interesting game tomorrow between Arkansas and, and Tennessee. I think that, uh, Again, there should be a lot of excitement around both games, but I, I think that one in 
think it was going to be a real good contest. Uh, watch out for this Alabama Kentucky game. I, I yeah. would not be shocked at all to see Alabama win win, win again tomorrow. Sure, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, Brian, let me stick with you. I know you don't want to talk about it, but let's head over to the Pac-12 where you <laughs> had a rough night. You being an Oregon guy, it was not a very good night for, for the Ducks, was it? Well, uh, the run uh, came to an end uh, later than some of us even thought it would. So uh, we pulled two games out uh, the last two nights, and the, the magic, I guess, ran out. But yeah, a lot of positives to build on for, for next season. And obviously they'll be in the, they'll be in the NIT, so hopefully get a – a home game or two for those guys to uh, to adjust a little bit, and for that those young players to to get ready for next season. But but yeah, USC uh, moving on. I think this win for USC to me uh, puts them pretty close to in, unless we have a bunch of uh, bid thieves. I think USC can feel pretty good. Uh, they're, they're obviously they're pretty close to that cut line, but for right this moment, I think they're in. Uh, Arizona USC will be a good game. Obviously, USC can erase all the doubt with a win tomorrow. But uh, uh, was it? Yeah, we also had U, uh, UCLA and, and Arizona was a good one. Uh, came down yeah. to that. In the regulation. Well, that was, yeah, such a disappointing ending to that. I mean, yeah. um, you know, it went into overtime. Really good game. Really good back and forth. Went into overtime. Arizona had a commanding lead, right. and I. W- they just blew the whole thing because they had the chance to call timeout with one second to go <laughs> and, and opted not to do that. And then there wasn't even a blow by handshake between Alford and Miller. What's going on here? Whereas right. last year it was such great theater. And, and UCLA was shut out in the overtime period. So it was an yeah. awful overtime for UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, well, John, what about UCLA? Are they in at this point or are they really sweating on Sunday? I would say they're uh, somewhat sweating right here. I mean, they did uh, what is it, get one win in the Pac-12 tournament against uh, Stanford, but they still had, uh, what is it, the win at USC to at least uh, give them one win that's pretty close to a tournament team. But as far as UCLA, they still have wins against Kentucky and Arizona on the road in the bank. Well, when you talk about how many spots are going to open up for teams um... – one of them that we know is not going to open up for a team to get it is going to be the Mountain West because – And here is a robbery. <laughs> no, I, yeah, we talked about, about bids being stolen. Most people think that Nevada is in. I still think they're fairly safely in. I don't think they have too much to worry about. It would be a bit of a shock if they don't make it. But It'll be, uh, they, it'll David, be more they, than a bit of a shock. David, a lot of teams David <laughs> they got their asses – kicked tonight by San Diego State. Well, let's I mean they outscored they completely outplayed San Diego State in the last 10 12 minutes of the game. Uh, outscored them by double digits to cut the lead to what was it 26 or 20 23. Yeah, after trailing by 33, uh they just got blown off the floor. Now this is a San Diego State team we were all big on. And, um, you, you know, I think you and I both picked them to win this tournament. They've been smoking hot for the, for the last several weeks. But I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting them to win, but I wasn't exact, expecting them to, like, curb stomp them like that. Yeah, so, so John, tomorrow we got San Diego State, New Mexico, is in Mexico got by Utah State. What, what do you think happens? Normally I would probably be looking for the higher-seeded team in New Mexico, but San Diego State, they've – they are much hotter right now when you look at not just the Nevada wins, but also a Boise State win in recent weeks that also helped to give them some momentum. Right. Let's uh, let's move to the Atlantic Ten, a conference that where a bid could possibly be stolen. Although uh, Brian, we did see the top two teams that people both think are in. I mean, everyone knows Rhode Island's going to be in, but the Bonnies are probably in as well, unless they slip up tomorrow with Davidson if they got by Richmond today. Yeah, this is a real interesting game, obviously. If St. Bonaventure does win, that would probably – they could probably feel pretty good, especially if uh, if Rhode Island is able to beat St. Joe's, then that would mean a, a matchup with Rhode Island. So even a loss there may not uh, knock them completely off a lot of people's boards. I know that they're uh, they're decently in uh, you know, a decent uh, number of people's brackets. So it'll, it'll definitely, be, uh, definitely be one of the games to watch in terms of uh, – in terms of a team that's really kind of uh, 
whether they're solidly in people's brackets or not, they're going to be a real interesting team to follow. But yeah, a loss tomorrow to Davidson would be pretty uh, pretty damaging for St. Bonaventure. They would put them right there on the cut line. And, and David, Rhode Island got by VCU today. Now they get St. Joe's who took care of George Mason. And uh, yeah. last week they had a little trouble with St. Joe's. <laughs> Yeah, last week they were at home against St. Joe's and lost by, I think it was 78 or whatever it was. I mean, it was they, they just got blown out of their own building on senior night of all nights. Um, and it was so bad that you almost dismissed it because it just didn't seem real. Like, it, like you just couldn't even digest it. So it'll be interesting to see what they do tomorrow. Rody very safely in regard, even if they lose by 78 right. once again. Uh, I, I agree with Brian about the Bonnies. I'm not liking them as much as most other people like them. And I include the real selection committee. I'm guessing with most other people, I do think the, co the real committee will take them, but I'm just not as big on them. And I don't think they do win tomorrow. I, I, you know, I said Davidson was my pick to win this tournament before it started. I'm still sticking with that. Well, uh, let's uh, go over to the American Conference. John, we saw quarterfinals today. Um, three games that weren't that. I guess the Wichita State Temple game was kind of close. Cincinnati took care of SMU. Houston rolled Central Florida. And we saw a hell of a game actually between Memphis and Tulsa with uh, – with Bruton for, for Memphis hitting the shot of the, the a fadeaway floating three pointer at the buzzer to win the game. <laughs> what? Well, it wasn't a fadeaway, but it was, was uh, more of a more of a Float. driving three. Yeah, it was a it was a driving floating three. It was an amazing shot, actually. But uh, uh, looking at it tomorrow, John, what do you think here? Cincinnati, Memphis, Wichita State, Houston. Well, I'm pretty sure a bit is not going to be stolen out of this conference. Not the way Cincinnati has played against Memphis this year, but we will have an, a very intriguing game as far as uh, Wichita State and Houston goes. I think a win by Wichita probably does put them in protected seed territory, but by the same token, if Houston's able to win this game, then I think they have a, a better chance of climbing up to possibly the seven or six line and be a little more comfortable wearing white in round one. Yeah, a uh, few more conferences to get through here. The Mid American Conference, David. We saw the uh, amazingly for this conference, the top two seeds make it through to the finals, although in a little controversial fashion there in the late game. Yeah, uh, you know Toledo and Eastern Michigan kind of going back and forth. Uh, there was some controversy there, but uh, um, yeah, it was a clock, a, you know, a, a challenged clock management issue to where. Uh, you know, I guess there was a jump ball or was it out of bounds uh, and the ball was going to be with Eastern Michigan and it was about a second or less than two seconds left. They went to review the clock to adjust the time and decided that the game was over. So Eastern Michigan not even getting a chance. But, you know, Toledo-Buffalo, I think that these were, were the two best teams all year long. I mean, they were the two teams that you had identified, I think, as early as November as being the two best teams. So it's, I guess it's not that surprising that they're meeting in the final and how dangerous are one of these teams or whoever wins tomorrow, how dangerous can they be in the round of 64? Uh, I think they, I think they could both could really be dangerous. And, and I think either one, whoever wins this game is going to be one of those upset specials that everyone's, everyone's probably going to be picking in the first round and it yeah. might come true. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, Brian, it was, uh, you've got that UCSB jersey on also. Uh, I got to hit you with another one. It was uh, another bad night for that team, too, tonight, uh, as they, they fell to Irvine and, and, uh, and a pair of upsets here in the Big West. It was, yeah. The, you had, uh, yeah, Cal Santa Barbara. It was kind of a back and forth game, but uh, yeah, in the end, Irvine prevailed. And so uh, you see Irvine, who was, has been in the tournament in recent years, will go up against. Uh, Fullerton, Fullerton, of course, who knocked off UC Davis, who was the defending Big West champion from last season. So sets up uh, a matchup between Fullerton and UC Irvine. Uh, obviously, all of these Big West teams are kind of rivals with each other. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think Fullerton hasn't been since two, uh, 2008, I want to say. So uh, they're looking for their first bid in 10 years. So, again, the Big West games always tend to be pretty exciting. 
uh, I think we'll I think we'll see a good matchup tomorrow night. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll have a fun one there. Uh, and John, we we may have a real fun one in co in Conference USA, uh, where Western Kentucky took care of Old Dominion and Marshall ended Southern Miss's run. As we figure, Lightning was not going to strike twice as far as uh, Southern Miss getting the win in this one. Marshall did uh, come out with an offensive explosion and are probably going to need one just to be able to get Marshall into the dance for what I think would be the first time since the late 80s. Uh, Marshall, John, are you, are you going to be wearing your Dan D'Antoni wardrobe tomorrow night if Marshall wins? You're damn right I will. <laughs> All right. <laughs> David if Marshall, guy. yeah, I mean, they could use an offensive explosion, but they could use some <laughs> mediocre defense. I mean, they don't even have to be good. If they could just upgrade it from utter crap to mediocre, Marshall will win the game. Uh, David, let's stick with the Southland day where hashtag – No curtain, by the way. I'm glad you didn't go to me. I <laughs> does not deserve my respect. There was no curtain today. No curtain today in the conference, you would say. We'll have to work on that for the final tomorrow. But, David, uh, Stephen F. Austin, mild upset over hashtag go Colonels. Their season, other than, you know, maybe a CIT bid is over now. Uh, Southeastern Louisiana took care of Sam Houston State, too. Yeah, uh, SFA, kind of surprising during the year. We really, really liked them going in the conference play, especially after what they did at LSU. A loss at Mizzou, but a loss in the final seconds. Uh, we really thought they would roll through this league, and they didn't. But I still think that their ceiling is is high when they play up to it. I think they win tomorrow, and – Again, we've seen him do it before in the round of 64. Yeah. Uh, and a couple more conferences here still. Let me see what else we got here. Uh, Brian, how about the big sky where uh, top – well, Montana, no upsets today, although, you know, Idaho had previously been eliminated. But Montana and Eastern Washington both get the wins. Montana, I believe, in overtime in a real, real good game. Yeah, Montana, they're uh, – you know, they're uh, – Fairly decent regular to the, the the tournament out of the Big Sky. The Big Sky had a really good year this year. You had, I think, five teams had 20 or more wins. So it was really refreshing to see kind of a resurgence in this league. They got a lot of big wins, uh, several big wins over some power conference opponents. So that really helped their, helped their numbers. So, uh, yeah, you have Eastern Washington going against Montana. Uh, I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I would not be uh, uh, surprised to see Eastern Washington pull it out. Kind of, uh, part of me kind of thinks that they actually are kind of on a roll. Uh, interesting, Eastern Washington was the first uh, school to send me a jersey, so I have a soft spot for them too. So, uh, so yeah, the, I think Eastern Washington has a pretty decent shot to, to upset Montana tomorrow. Uh, real quick, uh, chat about this game and a little uh, another promotional thing that we're having. Uh, any fan that goes to this game and is unable to get in because the game is sold out, there's just no seats left, no tickets available, <laughs> free chili. Who's free chili. Who's right. more yes. free chili. Yes, Who's more free chili. If, if the game is sold out and you can't get in, free chili. <laughs> just, just, just give us a call. Yes. Um, um, uh, the, the attendance at this has been pitiful, which is <laughs> sad because these are programs that are well-supported and get good home attendance. But anyway, moving on. Uh, John, Sunbelt, it was quarterfinal round day. This conference also not ending until Sunday. Uh, and we saw, I think we saw four snoozers on us. Well, there was uh, one close game involving uh, Georgia Southern and uh, Monroe. But other than that, it was uh, chalk holding up here. But other question coming up for tomorrow is, will Texas Arlington finally be able to get over the hump? Because they've been probably the most consistent team wins wise for the past two to three years in the Sun Belt, but have yet to make it to the NCAA tournament to show for that, at least in recent memory. Yeah, but a real fun rivalry in the late game there, too, between Georgia State and Georgia Southern. I think that has a shot to be a real good game. Two teams that I think are fairly even coming in, too. Yeah, I think Georgia State has the upper hand, but I mean, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of Georgia Southern winning. Uh, I think Louisiana blasts Arlington off the court. Arlington's had some really good teams up until this year. Uh, it's a real shame because they were clearly the best team last year and then lost a, such a key player right before the start of the conference tournament, and they just couldn't deal without them. But this Georgia State team is really good. I, I know that Louisiana is the first-place team. I think Georgia State is the hotter team. 
and it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's I mean well that's why I picked to win the tournament and I'm not changing my mind after today's 22 point win uh it was semifinal day of the MIAC as well. And Brian, after watching Hampton get by North Carolina A&T, we then saw the uh, well, North Carolina, I guess it wasn't an upset, North Carolina Central get beating Morgan State a 6-7 game there, setting up a Hampton NC Central final tomorrow. Yeah, some folks were uh, were talking about the fact that if Morgan State had, ups- or had uh, overcome North Carolina Central, would have set up a game between uh, Hampton and Morgan State where we had uh, – we had some. Uh, was it an incident? Uh, not. Well, not yeah, they, no. Well, they didn't get to finish the last time they played. So um, it's almost good, probably good for the conference that these teams don't meet again because it was a very nasty <laughs> between the two that had yeah. to forfeit. Uh, so Hampton NC Central, though, though, who do you think wins the game? I think Hampton's going to get it done. Uh, again, I'm I'm not sure why. I just feel like, uh, especially since they're going to be going into the Big South, uh, I believe it is either next year or after. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're they're going to they're kind of pumped. I think there's a lot of positives for that program uh, moving up in a similar vein to to Tennessee State with the Ohio Valley all, all those years ago. I think Hampton uh, is a program that is on the rise, actually. Well, there's one other conference that was in action today, but we'll get that in a minute. I want to take a preview of a couple other leagues that were not in action today before we get to the final conference that did play today. Uh, so let's go to America East, where, John, it is 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, championship game, UMBC at Vermont. What, what are you looking forward to here? I'm looking for a little bit of pain here after I uh, was at UMBC. It actually opened up their new on-campus arena against Vermont earlier this year and actually got shelled in the process so i yeah. i just don't see vermont losing this one i don't either david i, th- I think that this is that vermont should roll this should just be a almost by the by the end of the game i think it's created a glorified exhibition quite frankly yeah i think so uh, but david let me stick with you it is also there's one conversation we have not yet discussed at all in terms of bracket of games this <laughs> Fortnite, as we, as Brian, as you, Chris, did uh, on Twitter, uh, but uh, the Ivy League semifinal day tomorrow: Harvard, Cornell, Penn versus Yale. David, what do you think about tomorrow's two games, and who do you think wins the event? Well, it's just like Cornell going into the final final day. Uh, I think four or five different things had to happen in order for them to to win all the tiebreakers to get the fourth. Uh, what I think happens is that they lose to Harvard after all of that. <laughs> Uh, Penn and Yale, it's, it's kind of up in the air. Penn's been the team that we've kind of been projecting in the whole time. Uh, and they're at home. So you would think that all the cards have to be with them. I mean, the safe pick is with them, but you know, Yale has, c- could do it. <laughs> uh, so, so who you think Harvard wins the event? No, I think Penn does. Penn does. Okay. Yeah. Brian, who do you think wins the Ivy league bid? I think Harvard does, but close game versus Penn. Harvard. John, you want to be the tiebreaker here, Harvard or Penn? I am going to go with the Titel side on this one and choose the Quakers. Penn Quakers, okay. Uh, so went two to one here in favor of the Penn Quakers. We did skip a conference, getting back to it now. It was semifinal day in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Oh, I'm sorry, quarterfinal day in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. <laughs> yes. as, as Arkansas Pine Bluff beat Southern, Texas Southern beat up on Prairie View. Those two teams will meet at 5 o'clock tomorrow now in the what is the single semifinal the winner of that because we applied for a waiver for them we'll we will go up against sun, <laughs> yeah. sunday at 2 p.m against scrambling uh, we had to fix the bracket there was some problems with it but it's yeah back up david <laughs> yeah grambling the first place team ineligible for the for the conference tournament and the ncaa due to an apr ban but we submitted a waiver. Uh, you had to submit it online, so we uploaded it to this website here. Had not heard back from the NCAA, so we're assuming it went through. They would have told us had it not. So, but Chad, you, you're just wanting to make sure. Uh, were you going to give them a call right now? Well, we're gonna, well, 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 let's pull let's pull this up on the screen right here for a second first. Okay. Uh, let me just. Uh, Let's get this back. Got to get our notes together. This is get our notes here. We're running a little bit. This is great bit. television that we got here, Chad. Great TV because well, of this. Easy when you don't have arms, right? Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. The, 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 there is the NCAA website with the applications for waivers, and 
legislative relief. That's what we're looking for because the rules say that they are not supposed to be in because of this APR ban. Well, we submitted but, but we a got the waiver, didn't we? Well, well, David, we're not that certain. But the good news is they've got a phone number, and I've got a phone. Okay. So let's get, get read off that phone number to me there. Let's see here. It's, okay, uh, it is 317-1317-917. Uh, uh, oh, boy. Uh, Seven. There go. That's 61. every NCA 6144, and that's for Division One. We 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 double check the SWAC is Division One. That's the number we want. You're calling the NCAA national office. I can't. Voicemail for legislative relief waivers. This voicemail is checked from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Please what? leave a message with your name, name of your institution, and best number to reach you. Please provide a brief detail of the reason for your call, along with the specific bylaw number and the timeline of the event or activity. Wow, this is a tough one. A legislative relief yeah. staff member will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a great day. Okay, the bylaw number is the one that relates to the APR ban. Hi, we are calling from HoopsHD.com. I am Chad Sherwood, along with David Griggs. David, why isn't hi. anyone in the office? Ask him why no one's in the office. Why is it? In, well, David, they can't answer us. We're on the. Oh, report. it's a voice. Okay. okay yeah, it's, it's a, a voicemail. Voice but but we're calling about Grambling's waiver to confirm that it went through. Uh, and we need to give them the the bylaw number. It's the bylaw that refers to APR bans. That's okay, the number. It's the whatever number that is. Bands. Yeah, APR band bylaw number. We, we submitted it online. It's uploaded on hoopshd.com. Just confirming because we have a game that we want to play Sunday. Let them play the winner of Pine Bluff and Texas Southern. Uh, we're going to stream it live on hoopshd.com. We, we are, yes. Uh, so uh, please call us back. Uh, please call David Griggs back. You've got his phone number, I know, because he's in your uh, many, many complaints department. But uh, uh, please give us a call back and confirm everything so we can let all our Grambling wonderful fans let yeah. know tomorrow night to be ready for the Sunday's game. And, and the number, it's just just call us back at hoopshd.com. That's the number. Hoopshd.com. That's our number. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Now, are you satisfied? Do you feel better now? Well, now I think we're safe. Yeah, okay, good. I mean, they're going to hear that in the morning, and they're going to – because well, it is, it's emergency here, relief, and, and – and they're going to call us back, I guess, if there's any problems. If they, if we don't hear from them, then we're fine. All right. Uh, let's go. We've got a few other topics to hit on here, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, how about the team of the people? John, oh, there, there's, Cal there's... Baptist. Well, this was a game where uh, Cal Baptist had jumped out to a, a nice lead early before uh, UC San Diego cut into the lead. It was only about – three points at halftime, but this was another game where Cal Baptist pulled away in the second half, and as it turned out, they actually had the uh, biggest win, at least in terms of points, in the West region today. Yep, and now with with the big upset, Dixie State, who knocked off Cal Baptist in the Pac West title game, gets knocked off by Azusa Pacific. Uh, so, David, tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern time, Cal Baptist and Azusa Pacific, uh, as they are now two wins away from the Elite Eight of that trip to Sioux Falls. Yeah, round of 32 action going on. And it's just, it's their march, to, it's it's their manifest destiny. It's their march to greatness. The Lancers, the Lancers are leaving Division Two as champions. That's what's going to happen. They, they are leaving D2 as champions. Uh, Brian, you joined us for the first time ever on our mock committee tonight. Let, uh, I'm going to put the results of what we did here in our mock committee. First of all, thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good time. It was, I think we had a lot of fun this evening, didn't we? We did indeed. It was a lot of fun filling in all the teams and deliberating between all of us. Uh, good spirited banter. And, and here's the results of what happened tonight. We now have uh, – not only all 36 at large by bids filled, but we have four extra teams in. Uh, John, can you explain why we have four extra teams in there? Alabama, UCLA, Oklahoma, St. Bonaventure? Well, we were assured of at least uh, three conferences opening up with the uh, ACC, Big East, and Big 12 all getting, uh, being assured of a team on the at large board. But once we 
voted in Alabama, UCLA, Oklahoma, and St. Bonaventure. That consequently opened up a bid in the SEC as well. So as far as the conferences like the Pac-12, the American, and the A-10, it's more likely than not that they'll probably open up, but it's still possible that a bid thief could uh, steal a bid like, let's say, a Memphis or USC or even Davidson, who is not in our field yet. So that's something we have to keep our eye out on. Right. And, and and what we have here by our numbers is after these 40 teams here in the at-large bid section, at most there's three more spots for these remaining 14 under consideration teams. So that's something we'll update you on tomorrow. David, we also seeded teams through the first eight seed lines, at least an initial seeding. But there's something crazy on the board I've never seen before, David, in the center column there. We awarded yeah. the center to Delaware State, but what's that below the center award? Well, the Stallings Award, it's what we came up with. Uh, oh, Pittsburgh had a, had, had a gloriously awful season. They weren't the worst team. Uh, and, the, and the rules for the Centenary Award is that it's, not, it's the worst team, not the one that's the most gloriously worst, just the worst, period. Pittsburgh was a special kind of awful. Uh, they actually played Delaware State and beat them, although there was some contention about how small the victory margin was at home. Uh, Pittsburgh... As far as I know, this has never happened before. Uh, tried to lowball Kevin Stallings while buying him out. No coach has ever been fired while has ever been lowballed while being fired. That I know of. Pittsburgh actually attempted to do it. That's how bad Pittsburgh was. So we decided <laughs> that we can't just let that go unrecognized. So we have created what is a sense the Stallings Award, which will go to the Worst non under the radar team every year. Yeah, the worst major or or you know multi bid conference league team. Pittsburgh, <laughs> congratulations, our inaugural Stallings Award winner. And both these type teams are now available to be voted into our field yes, tomorrow. Yes. Mike, get in. Please keep your eye open. We'll we'll update you again tomorrow night, and yeah. the site will have our final results results on it Sunday before the uh, selections are announced. Um. How about the survival board? God, we got a lot of stuff we're doing tonight, don't yeah, we? we uh, yeah, uh, we have more free chili. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> and again, be be the eighth viewer to view the survival board, and you get a free chili. Just reach out to us. <laughs> Can you get to say there were 130 teams left on our survival board, el- available, possible to win the NCAA tournament? Um, as a result of today's actions. Whoa! Okay, there it goes. We're down to no, we're down to double digits now. Ninety-eight teams left, and and David, can you tell people what what all these different ways that teams are described here on the board mean? Well, these are. I, I mean, again, we do this for the selection committee. This is available to them in the committee room. Uh, I I've been called out and saying, "What are you talking about? The committee doesn't look this at this at all. It's not made available. It is made available to them. They have smartphones. They have the internet. This page is absolutely available to them, and it basically it's a guide. It, it tells them what they need to be doing. They have a really hard job. Imagine assembling a stereo without any stereo instructions. Well, these are their selection instructions it, it tells them what they need to be doing uh we have like the four teams there you see the automatic qualifiers those are bold and in all caps those are the conference champions they need to put those in there's other teams there like you know the sec for instance arkansas auburn florida the chances of all of those teams winning the sec championship is very very small probably only one of them will but those other teams will be selected anyway. So if the committee comes in here and says, oh, like Auburn, Florida, Kentucky, they know to take those teams. They don't need to think about it. They just need to put them in the field. The next category is kind of uh, complicated. Wouldn't you say, Chet, the ones that are in italics? Yeah, the ones that are in italics, you look at a team like, like Alabama, like Arizona State, or UCLA. These are teams that we think the committee should be debating. Uh, yeah. Take your time to go over them. Uh, versus the final category, teams like New Mexico and San Diego State, only talk about them if they win that automatic bid. Right, if they yeah. don't win an automatic bid, don't talk about them. So if the committee sitting there saying, I wonder if we should talk about, oh, a team like Central Connecticut State out of the Northeast Conference. Not on the board. Yeah, they're not on the board. Ahead. So, I mean, you don't even need to – and, again, they've never selected 
Central Connecticut State. Remember when they uh, did the reveal of the top 16 teams, the top four seeds? Well, Central Connecticut State was not one of the teams. They were not on this board. So, right. I mean, again, just goes to show you that the committee is using this as a tool, and that's why we do it. Right. We do it for them. Uh, that's our survival board. You can check it out. Uh, but, um, Brian, I don't know if you've been following our video notebooks or not, but, but we know David is locked in the puppet bunker, and we've been giving him a shot to get out of it every night. All he has to do is answer a trivia question. I've, been, I've panel, answered all of these right. We have a panel of Hoops HD experts that asked the question and provided the answer. And if he can tell us the answer that, that they gave us in the envelope here, he will get out. So These experts allow, are morons, by the way. These are I've been allowing John, and I'll allow you also to try to help him answer it. And, and Brian, being a Pac-12 guy, this is a Pac-12 question tonight. So I want to throw it over to you first. Maybe you can clue David in on the answer and help him out, okay? All right. All right. Here's our question. UCLA, led by Lou Alcindor, played against this team in the Astrodome in the first ever regular season game that was televised. Name that team. Oh, this is – Again, this is a common knowledge question. It was the first prime time game ever. David, I was Guy Lewis helped put it together. It was the you know, the University of Houston. And when you look at his tenure, Houston never won a national championship, but they were a Final Four team that year, albeit they lost to UCLA. Went to multiple Final Fours in the eighties with sl five slam a jamma. Quite a history. But the answer is Houston. The answer well, is Houston. Well, Jim. let me let me ask the Brian Houston and John. Brian, do you agree with him that's Houston? Uh, if I remember, was that the, uh, oh goodness, Alcindor, was it his junior year where Alcindor, was it, yeah. who you said? I think, I, I believe well, uh, yeah, was it 68. It, I'm trying to think, hmm, was it? Was it the first regular <laughs> game that was televised, and it was in the Astrodome, it was a huge event. Yeah, was, it was uh, huge. Uh, didn't he, like, somebody said he, like, hurt his eye or something in that game? He, he did, yeah. He, yeah, that, that, that's right. Yeah, because he had damaged his eye in practice. He got poked in the eye, but he played anyway, but he was not as effective. Uh, Elvin Hayes played for Houston. It, okay, that's, that's our, our – yeah. yeah. We all know the answer is Houston. All right. <laughs> David, getting out of this bunker. Let, 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 let's find out here. Let, let's go ahead and reveal the answer. And um, David, unfortunately <laughs> – What? No. Nope. nope. Wait, hold on a second. We have a buzzer problem. Here, so That's not Unfortunately, David, you are wrong. Well, no, I'm not. The Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland <laughs> Browns are not even a college basketball team. Who, who is fact-checking these Absolutely. answers? That is the horrible, this was these stupid PhD experts. <laughs> UCLA, college basketball, Cleveland Browns, NFL. What an event it was. It was I amazing. Mean, <laughs> I also understand we had some uh, lovely pregame music for that game that year. Let me just see if I can pull up the uh, screen share here. Give me oh, one. boy. Uh, I don't even know what, I, what he's doing. I really want to leave right now. I think I want to end the podcast right now. Is this going to be like the Pac-12 tournament's halftime entertainment? Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm very scared. But he <laughs> do it, thankfully. No, I think you're going to get a reprieve because my screen is freezing on my end. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me go to some final thoughts. Uh, Brian, let me start with you. Any other final thoughts about everything that happened today and uh, all the exciting games that are coming up tomorrow? Well, again, Grand Canyon and New Mexico State, that might be the game I watch more intently than any other. Obviously, USC, seeing if they can solidify their bid and get in with the win over Arizona. And then also the Atlantic 10, uh, you know, if, if Davidson is indeed uh, going to be able to uh, to knock off the Bonnies and we get a potential bid poach there. Really, it's just the bid poach scenarios that we're looking at for tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. I think, but tomorrow is one of the, the you know, most fun days. More automatic bids given out today than you know. I think half the conferences give out their automatic bids tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be real fun. Uh, John, any final thoughts from you? It looks like we have it fixed now. I should have <laughs> Oh my God! No, 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 no! We don't. We don't need this. <laughs> this is the worst promo of a, of, of, of of anything that I have. Ever. Oh. John, I got something for you. <laughs> David, your final thoughts. 
Uh, I just felt that it, it – it dawned on me earlier today that it was 10 years ago today where during the SEC tournament, a tornado hit the Georgia Dome during quarterfinal night, which was on Friday. <laughs> and, um, you know, so it was Friday of championship week that set up a situation where they had to play the final. Well, you had a – you essentially had five teams left at that point. Four were easily into the tournament. One was not even in the NIT in Georgia, and they needed to – the conference tournament to get in and it created a situation where that Georgia team had to play a quarterfinal game in the early afternoon and a semifinal game that evening and then a championship game the next day they ended up winning it all but before so that was remarkable the other thing was that it ended up being played at Georgia Tech and CBS produced the game, ESPN aired the game. So what you ended up with was a sub NIT team playing in the SEC championship on an A on an ACC floor uh, on a game that was being produced by CBS and aired by ESPN. It was one of the most bizarre, remarkable things maybe in the history of college sports. And it really was the most remarkable moment of championship week that I could ever recall. There have been many, many, many others, but nothing ever like that. And I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that again. Well, you remember who that, that uh, they were a 14 seed in that tournament. And you remember, yeah. uh, somebody here should remember what team, uh, what team they played, what three seed they had. Yeah, that's uh, one of their <laughs> arch rivals, right? <laughs> it was Xavier. Correct. Yeah. Uh, there were people that were hyping up that as like a trendy upset pick, and I was like, well, Georgia yeah. had a lead in the second half. <laughs> well, I guess on that note, though, I do want to thank everyone for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow night with our final edition of the Championship Week Video Notebook. Uh, this is going to be our last one, our last super late night. It is an ungodly hour already right now here on the East Coast, so I'm going to go and collapse and fall asleep. I don't know about the rest of you, but on behalf <laughs> of Brian Black, John Slika, David Griggs, I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you all tomorrow night.